So what is West syndrome? West syndrome, we say when there are spasms which are occurring in clusters plus hips arrhythmia on EEG will equal to West syndrome. Previously, developmental delay was also a part of the diagnosis of West syndrome as a triad, spasms, hips arrhythmia and developmental delay. But now this has been taken off because we know there are cryptogenic causes or idiopathic causes which occur in a developmentally normal child, right? So, spasms which are occurring in clusters and there is a EEG which shows hips arrhythmia, you give a diagnosis of West syndrome. So, West syndrome again can be classified as confirmed West syndrome when there is spasms in the child and EEG shows hips arrhythmia. When it is a probable cause, when only you can get the spasms but you do an EEG, you are not able to find the hips arrhythmia, you will name it as a probable West syndrome. You have seen the patient, you have seen the epileptic spasms and you are convinced clinically that they are spasms. But in case you do not get the EEG pattern, the interictal EEG pattern does not show the hips arrhythmia, then you would write your diagnosis as probable West syndrome. There is one more entity called possible West syndrome where the spasms are doubtful. The, even the clinically, the spasms look very doubtful and EEG also show no hips arrhythmia. So, this is an accepted classification for West syndrome. So, so far we are talking a few points about West syndrome. We will define the spasms and then we will move on to the etiology. So, coming to the clinical spasms. So, what are these clinical spasms? We just talked about clinical spasms, hips arrhythmia, etc. So, what is exactly a clinical spasm? So, spasm you will define as it is a brief movement, very short term, okay. So, it is a brief movement. It is a synchronous movement, okay. So, that movement will involve synchronously the head, trunk and limbs, okay. Sometimes head alone there is a bobbing is there or trunks and limbs alone. So, that is there but most often when we uh, get the patients, when we get to see the children, so, they have the synchronous whole body moving. So, the head will bob, then the whole trunk and the limbs will go for a quick brief movement. So, it is like a jerk. I mean, how brief it is? What is the duration? So, mostly it is around one second. It is a very, very quick movement. When we get these patients in the OPD and we ask the parents to take a video of it. So, by the time they get the mobile, they start taking a video, it is disappearing. So, because even though it can occur in clusters, they are very brief moments. So, they occur for around 1 second or maximum up to 2 seconds. So, these are all clinical spasms. You should know the definition. And again, based upon the characteristic of the spasm, it is divided into flexor, extensor or it can be mixed. Flexor means the whole trunk and the limbs are coming into flexion. So, this is flexion, total flexion. Extensor is extension. So, when compared to flexion and extensor spasms, flexor spasms are more common when they say. When we come to say I think around 80, 70 to 80 percent is only flexor spasm. So, they come like a quick morose reflex, like a quick startle reflex the, uh, the spasms will appear. So, extensor spasms are also possible and even mixed spasms, sometimes flexor and a mixture of extensor spasms are also possible. It can be symmetric or asymmetric. Symmetric spasms in the sense that the, both the limbs are uniformly involved. When one limb is involved alone, then it is an asymmetric spasm. So, that is also possible. It will depend upon where the etiology is or where the focus is there. If it is only a focal lesion in the cerebrum, then it can be a asymmetric spasm. So, you will definitely see spasms in children and as pediatricians, we should never ever tell it is a normal phenomenon. It can be colic, it can be uh, morose reflex. No, there is a lot of misdiagnosis going on when we uh, get patients uh, of epileptic spasm. So, it is always uh, even if the child's uh, spasms you have not seen in neuro hospital, ask the patients to take videos, see a couple of videos, not just by one video, do not decide on this, see a couple of videos. You can even ask the parents, how is the spasm? Ask them to enact in front of you and come to a diagnosis and do repeated EEGs because hips arrhythmia is going to be an interictal pattern. So, if, you, if one EEG does not show hips arrhythmia, repeat it and then come to a diagnosis because diagnosing epileptic spasms and starting off the treatment will save the child from going into a great deal of neurodevelopmental disability. So, identification is very, very, very important. It can be flexor, it can be extensor, it can be symmetric or asymmetric, right? And these spasms, 
most often they occur in clusters okay and they often appear just before the child is about to fall asleep or when the child is waking up from sleep so this also you can tell the parents so when the child is about to sleep please be get, get ready with your mobile phone so definitely parents will understand this and they come back to you with the videos okay and we always have this uh, doubt so is it just a myoclonic jerk or is it a seizure so myoclonus is even more shorter short duration than jerks that is than the epileptic spasms and tonic seizures are longer than the spasms okay so we describe spasms as something which is longer than myoclonus and shorter than a tonic seizure got it okay so this is the definition of clinical spasms and of course emg whenever you in doubt we do eeg and emg together this emg will be done from the neck and the uh, limb muscles from there we do that emg and it will show a diamond like pattern so this along with eeg when collaboratively uh, interpreted will give uh, the correct diagnosis of west syndrome